The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hello, Cleaning Nation. This is part two in a two-part episode. If you missed episode one, go back to the previous episode and check it out and then enjoy this episode number two. So how much of a challenge would you like it to be? How much time would you like to spend? So now that you've gotten more clarity on what the benefit is going to be and how it's going to feel and some of the the criteria that would need to happen in order for that to occur, that vision to happen. Think a little bit more, like, what am I willing to do for it? So this is the part where we usually stop, okay? This is why we get stuck with our vision. Because nobody had the cojones to ask you, what are you willing to do for it? (laughs) Because you know what? Nobody likes to be the dream killer, okay? All your friends, all your, like, oh, that sounds amazing. You should totally do that. And they never stop and ask you the truth. The truth is, is it enough for you to do what it takes? And what is that? What are you willing to put into this? And what are you not willing? Maybe that's an even more important question. Here's what I'm not willing to do. Be honest with yourself. So this is the next phase. So we're going to do another three minutes. And we're going to dig a little deeper here. And we're going to ask ourselves the truth. What are we willing to do for this to happen, this vision to occur? What are you willing not to do? What are you not willing to do? Like what's the, okay, there's a limit. I'm not willing to sacrifice this. I'm not willing to cut that. I'm not willing to, you know, right? It could be time, money, effort, stress level, whatever it is. What are you not willing to do too? Okay. All right. Ms. Lindsay, can we have another three minutes? All right. Ready? Go. How many of you found that one a little more challenging? Like you had to dig a little deeper. Okay. Yeah, because when we start to get real with stuff, we start going, ah, yeah, when it comes down to it, how much am I willing to put into this? Because this is going to, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where I'm going to draw a line with you right now about whether it stays a fantasy or you turn it into a goal. Okay, so I know this is this is the part. I was like, man, what you're gonna make my dreams like actually have to do hit reality and and well, I have to do stuff and I have, hold on a minute. <laughs> so what what did I get myself into? So next level of clarity, okay, is now I want you to play your own devil's advocate, and I want you to take. We're gonna take three minutes again, and I want you to think of. What are the barriers? What do you think could or has already been the reason why you didn't do it or why you didn't make progress? What could get in the way? What could be a barrier? Okay. And it can be, and I'm going to give you a little hint. It can be internal or it could be external. It can be either one. There's no uh, rules about this. I just want you to write, just let it, so stream of consciousness, what could get in the way, slow you down, or stop you from doing this, okay? And I, I, again, you know, you're like, oh, well, yeah, you know, well, a hurricane could hit my house. Yes, yes, okay. Let's not go there. So three minutes, we're going to brainstorm and let ourselves just free, free flow What could slow you down or keep you from achieving this goal? Okay, ready? Go. All right. So 
did you find that that was um, an interesting exercise, part of the exercise? Did you notice that there were more, maybe more internal or more external? Did you notice that you felt like there were more outside influences, for example, like outside of you that could be the factors? Or was it fears or what did it sound like? So I'm really interested. This is where it starts to get juicy because I'll give you a little hint. All of these are stories. All of them are stories. Why? Because none of them have happened. And some of them may present themselves, these stories may present themselves as perfectly logical and they are totally like you could argue them in a law a court of law of how you how justified you are to believe that this could happen and it might right but here's what's interesting here's the little hint these are the exact things that your monkey mind <laughs> goes to every time you tell yourself i really want this because there's that part, that, that creative, that frontal lobe, the, the part that's like, I'm ready for something new. I really want this. And then the, the, this is the more sophisticated version, by the way, of the monkey mind. This is the educated monkey mind. This is the logical monkey mind. This is the one that's going to come in with his suit on, his briefcase, open up his whole file and tell you all the evidence about why this probably won't work. <laughs> Okay, so this is really important. This part of the exercise is really to reveal to yourself, give you an inside look on how the prosecutor is building his or her case against you doing it. Okay, no matter how reasonable those things, those potential obstacles seem. We have to be mindful from the perspective of we need to have a very clear um, defense. We need to really be sure that we're addressing these things before we even set them into goals because they're like objections. It's kind of like anticipating a client's objections and kind of addressing them in the way that you talk to them before you even give them a chance to give you the objections, right? So hopefully all of you had some version of a story, because that's what it is, a story that could be the exact reason that you get dissuaded, slowed down, you put it off, it stays vague, you don't really take any actions, and you can't quite put your finger on it. Well, now you can, okay? Now you can put your finger on it, and, it, and I want to encourage you after this call, keep going with this. What are we, let, dig a little deeper. What are my fears here? Would, you know, if you didn't get to the fear base, go there. What's my fear? What if I fail? What if, as, as Renee's prosecutor monkey mind says, you know, what if your, you know, your lack of letters behind your name is not good enough and it's not well received? And what if they don't, you know, what if they, okay. What if, and finish that monkey mind statements. What if? Those are going to be fear-based things. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if this doesn't happen? What if I fail? Okay. I also want you to explore what if you're successful? Oh, but well, uh-oh. What if you have, what if it actually works? Oh, shoot. Well, gosh, what would that be like? Because the monkey mind, the crafty monkey mind, will tell you lies about success, too. Well, you know, you, okay, Michelle, yeah, all right, you can do that. But you know who you're going to become if you do that, right? You're going to be that hoity-toity, you own two businesses kind of chick, huh? We're like, oh, yeah, one wasn't enough for you? Are you greedy? What's wrong with you being successful like that? 
you know. E, all right. Well, I didn't try that one on for size. All of a sudden, mm. <laughs> was, prosecutors came at me from a whole different angle. I said, gee, all right. You know, maybe there's some deservability in it. It could be uh, maybe I start feeling guilty that I didn't even realize I would feel guilty. Like, what if I was successful at this? What if you were really successful? What if it took off so much that some people around you might have to change? Oh, I don't know. You know, like, ooh, hmm. who might be affected by your success? And, and maybe not in a way that they're totally comfortable with. Uh, so this is important. What would happen if you're successful? What would that look like? How would you have to change? How would the people around you have to change? Like if you're Christina, like, what if you take cruises every year? What if you're the kind of business owner that's like, you know what? I'm going to be on a ship. Don't call me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to answer. I can't answer. I'm going to be somewhere where there's no cell service. I'm going to the Bermuda Triangle on a cruise ship. So don't even try. <laughs> We're like, Ooh, well, what kind of person would that be? Right? So I, Lindsay, I think let's take two minutes on this one. And I want you to write down what would happen if you were successful? What would you, who would you become? Who would it affect? Who might not even like it? Just so you suss this out. Okay, ready? Two minutes. Let's go. I don't know. I did this with you. I've been doing these all along with you. Now I'm on like the third page here. That one, and I've done this before. And that one got me again. I just was like, I started writing some stuff and I'm like, ooh, dang. Okay, I, I'm going to be super, super vulnerable with all of you. And I'm going to share first this time. So I told you that my goal or my vision is to help my daughter move to Japan and have a house and be, you know, she wants to get married, have kids, like the whole thing in Japan, in a whole nother country. So I, the brave part of me, right, the ambitious part, the one that loves challenge is super excited about that. I'm excited for her. I, she's, I can see her there and all that's the good part. Then I started writing, what if I'm successful? And then the real truth came out. And the very first thing I wrote was, I might not like that. Uh, hold on. Wait. I could end up lonely. <gasps> oh, no, you didn't. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to create a life of my own. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> what? Uh, I might not like what I see in the mirror when I'm by myself. Uh-oh. She might not need me. <gasps> wow. Uh, she could be happy without me. Whoa, man. I'm like, shoot. None of those felt good, by the way. <laughs> so, like, none of those, were, like, those were not the kind of things that I was like, oh, yeah. In all the excitement of the vision that I've said to myself and to her that I would help her with and all that, I never once really, truly sat down with this and said, but what if you're successful? Uh-oh. Shoot. That's always confronting. And you know, that's the stuff that my monkey mind subconsciously or consciously works on me on. Even though I wasn't thinking about it that way until just now. Go like, Whoa. So did you all have some things that maybe came up? We were like, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> I would have to change certain ways. Like I wrote down, I would have to get a life that doesn't involve her. Like <laughs> She's 23. You would think that would already be the case. Apparently not so much because dang, 
because if she weren't here, if I weren't involved and I wasn't, you know, I, I love the thrill of thinking about doing that and helping her and doing all of that because I'm involved. But if I succeed, I won't be involved anymore. <laughs> not that way, not in the way that I am now. Uh-oh, right? So those are things that I definitely need to consider when I'm emotionally and mentally crafting my action steps towards, towards making this a reality. Otherwise, what are we going to do? We're going to self-sabotage. We're going to find small little ways to chip away at our resolve, to chip away at, and I even, prior, what, when I wrote what could get in the way, it was all me. All of them were me. I'm like, I could lose focus. I could get frustrated with her not participating enough. I, I could fall back into my old patterns. I could not make enough time. I could claim that I was too busy. I could, and guess what all those were tied to? Because if I'm really successful, she won't need me anymore. Oops. Funny how that works, huh? So when we say we want things, we want this vision, there is always a price, if you will, right? There's always a, a trade. Sometimes it's a trade up, but it's still a trade. We have to retire a part of ourself, maybe, right? We have to grow up in another way. We have to, like me too, like I have to grow up as a mother. I've kind of had this perpetuated teenage years with my daughter and she's 23 and I, it's hard to admit that I have to grow up in order for her to have this and for me to support her in it. So I have to change. And guess what? Those are the things. So Angie that says you want to do your art, right? And want that freedom and want to be able to embrace that. Well, there is going to be a trade-off for you. I know we've talked about this, right? For another part of you that is that work oxen, that workhorse with the heavy yoke on your back, right? That says, but wait a minute, I'm the worker. I work hard. I do all these other things. I'm responsible for everyone else. I mean, how can I be this free, high fluting, you know, free-spirited artist? When I'm so heavily yoked, I'm going to have to let go of some of that identity in order to embrace and lean into this new you that you really want. You're being called towards it. And I believe Rodney and Michelle and Arminda and all of you actually have some part of your heart and your soul that is calling you to something else, something new. And guess who's going to have to change the most? It's you, right? Who are you going to become in the process of becoming successful at this? And at the same time, there are going to be people. The other flip side is, my daughter is also going to have to learn not to need me in the way that she has. She's going to have to let go. She's going to have to grow up also in ways that, right? So, and I know like this got, I know this got really like deep, really fast, but I'm telling you, if there are visions and goals that you want in your life, and you haven't done them yet, this deep work, this is where that shift happens or not. If we don't do this work and we don't dig deeper, it just stays a vision. And we just keep saying, someday, 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 I'm going to have the kind of business that will allow me to take a cruise every year. I'm going to have the kind of business that will retire my husband out of his work that he hates and come be with me. Um, I will have this new version of a new business that is going to take me and everyone around me to a new place that is unknown. 
at this point. Like, that's all going to mean you have to grow. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me. But like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text. It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.